بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا رسول الله صلاة تكون طريقا لقربه وتوكيد لحبه وباب لجمعنا عليه وهدية مقبولة بين يديه صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope you all are doing amazing for those of you who are First time visitors, I want to welcome you and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase you in khair in this life and the next. Of course, the context at hand demands that some things be spoken to. But I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and sadad. First, I want to address something that I think is a mistake on my part and a failure on my part. And that is the challenge it is to serve a humongous demographic of people. And... Someone who embraced Islam in 1992 started a religious service, I think, in the mid-90s. From that time till now, uh, you know, a, a huge number of people, whether online or on life, that I serve. And as someone who, who very early on, uh, after 10 years of study with my teacher, was was asked by him and given her permission to become an imam, um, it is obviously going to be difficult to serve a community perfectly. And to admit that I'm an imam for everybody, right? whoever comes to me, no matter who they are, within the realm of Islam, who needs help, uh, I'll be there for them be the as best I can. And there'll be failures in that, and I'll make mistakes in that. The role of the imam, as Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says, is to achieve the two best, khayra khayraini or khayra shalraini, to achieve the two best or the two worst. And I... I have made some mistakes in this area. And I think it's important that there are two things that need to be said about this. And I'm speaking now to the people of the Ilm, the people who are more conservatively leaning or the people who are maqasari leaning. Um, I think that this is an opportunity to acknowledge mistakes on my end so that we can think about working together more in the future and, and, and contributing to the da'wah. We want to leave the da'wah in a better shape than it was when we found it, bin illa. And that is, for example, the issue of the Playboy uh, interview, which happened, I believe, in 2017, 2015. I believe Playboy stopped issuing news at that time uh, that the interview took place. That was one of the reasons that I didn't have an issue with it. They were not publishing nude photos. The individual was not on the cover of the magazine. This is a, a, a failure by uh, the brother in his research that we'll talk about hopefully a little later. Um, and that's turned into, of course, now a lie and gain steam. But on my end, and some some brothers that I haven't talked to in a while contacted me and, and shared with me their concerns just yesterday, uh, from from an Ilmi perspective, and I and my arguments, of course, not comparing her to Malcolm, but noting how Malcolm is a precedent. Um, I believe there have been other religious leaders across Sunni Shia perspectives that appeared in magazines um, that are questionable, um, but that's a failure on my part. But it was an attempt to try to serve someone in my community who I know. I did her marriage, uh, I know her family, I know her to be a decent person, alhamdulillah, and, and it's not her fault, and she shouldn't be blamed. Um, and, and also, I shouldn't be deemed irredeemable in an attempt to serve somebody, uh, and to serve someone in a way that is not as it is portrayed, it was not by any means encouraging people to look at pornography, because there was no pornography in that magazine at that time, uh, as well as just have that assumption about a religious teacher, I find it really just out of pocket. But my mistake was to communicate correctly. And I own that mistake. And I own the mistake of that decision. I am owning the mistake of that decision um, to support that because in hindsight, it was wrong. I have no problem saying that. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I do have a problem with people attacking her, uh, you know, saying things about her that are unacceptable. She is our sister. Alhamdulillah, she's married. And we should, uh, I think, show greater respect and restraint. But that's an example. At that time, nobody communicated with me. Nobody contacted me. Nobody reached out to me. The individual himself uh, is mistaken in thinking that you shouldn't reach out to people first. If a person who commits apostasy, used to tap, right, should be contacted and given an opportunity, what about people who make mistakes in these areas and people even of knowledge? The second uh, example I think I could give is the Lupe concert where I tweeted, and this is a mistake I made, um, look at the Noor. But there is a context here, and, and people begin to attack me 
Uh, people begin to say things about me and people begin to feel very aggressive. And I'm, of course, not going to respond nicely to that. You show up on my comments box and begin to bully me or bully the people who follow me or my students. I'm not going to give you the time of day, man. And that is showing me that you're not someone that has the erudition um, needed to to gain and to discuss and, and engage. But I, 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 at that time, was serving in a community was asked, Lupe is someone who I've answered questions to. Lupe is his own man. I'm not responsible for Lupe. He's his own man. I'm not responsible for Noor. She's her own woman. But I have responsibility when asked to do my best to serve. And have had interesting discussions with him over the years, alhamdulillah, someone that I, I, I see as a friend. And find it problematic to label him as a fusaq and, and brother Ali, I know is to be a very committed Muslim, alhamdulillah. Um, but, you know, went to the concert, and at that concert, the very beginning, Lupe said that there's an imam here, uh, and this imam, I want to encourage you all to go to his mosque. And this is at the time that I took the picture and said, the nur, look at the nur. I, I think that context is important. I didn't explain that context well, and that lent it to being misunderstood, and that's my fault. And I wish I had remembered the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he was walking with his wife at night, and he said, this is my wife, but you're the messenger of Allah. No one would ever assume evil of you. He said that shaitan, you know, shaitan moves to the veins of people, moves to the blood. And that is my fault. And I own that. And that is something that I have a responsibility as best I can, although trying to serve large numbers of people and moving really rather quickly, not having a massive team uh, to help me and to support me. I have a team of maybe two people right now um, to do the work that I do. A mistake was made. And I should have communicated the context of that. Again, there was no communication from even people who read into it what wasn't there. I will not apologize, though, for being in a place where I believe we have a responsibility, me as someone who was guided to Islam and understands how beautiful Islam is, to spread Islam. Hassan Benna went into Shisha houses to spread Islam. The process of making a tawaf around the Kaaba that was surrounded by idols and his companions were there and there was there was nudity happening. But I believe we have to spread the haq. And I've given shahadas to people in trap houses, four brothers, four bloods, one night. Uh, I've, I've pulled a Muslim out of a pub. I've gone, I'll go to AA meetings with Muslims. I, I believe that I have a responsibility to help, not because I'm great, but to help people see the beauty of Islam. Not through me, but through that experience of learning and growing and sharing together and being there for people. I'm not going to apologize for that. And if people have some issues with that, that's something we can discuss. But the way that I portrayed it and the way that I presented it was was not right. And I own that mistake. The third issue is the term American Islam as an example. Um, immediately, I was sort of castigated, and I understand why. Um, it, it certainly can be triggering and cathartic, and that's my fault, not to be sensitive around it. But there's only been two instances where people have asked me what I meant. One was, at that time, now he's a scholar, a student of knowledge in Mecca, who contacted me, and we met and had coffee. And then another was a scholar who called me to his home. And, and that scholar, uh, in both instances, by the way, when I explained what I meant, they were like, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and what did I say was that you have fatwa Hindia, you have fatwa Masriya, you have fatwa, uh, uh, you name it, right? You have different specific books written for fatwas of people of specific countries. And so my usage of the term was in the area where the orf is applicable. An orf al-muhakkam is one of the greater axioms of Islam. And and we find this in our text, you know, if you study usul al-fiqh, I think in the waraqat, it's the basic text, right? When he talks about al-am, uh, alif and lam, you know, when alif and lam is given to ism al jins, it means an. But then, why do scholars always use the example of talaq, the word at talaq, to show that this is an, but as uh, Izzy Abdan Abdul Salam and, and Imam al Hattab al Maliki mentioned, that the am, it can be yukhassas bil bil orf, that the word talaq should not be understood to be universal or general here, but it has to be restricted to what someone implies by when they say it in that context, in this context, not in all situations, in the context I'm talking. The point is we have this history of cultural negotiation when acceptable, that the araf, the orf, 
uh, can come into play. The first PhD done in Azhar in 1992 by Ibn Abi Sunnah, I believe is his name, Abu Sunnah. Al-Hadafi was on an arf wal-adah, was on custom and how it impacts Islamic law. So my usage of American Islam was one in the context of ishtihad, where accessible and permissible, not fundamentals. And only two people in all these years have ever asked me what I meant by that. And I sit now on a North American Fit Council. I sit on ittihad al-ulama al-adami. I sit on councils of scholars, hundreds of scholars. It never declared me as a deviant or thrown me under the bus or done these things. I've been welcomed with open arms and people that have concerns always are able to engage me. But the point is that it's my fault that I did not explain that well. And I hope that the people of Dean, people of knowledge, the people who have, of your edition who are listening to this, and I've made that mistake in the past too, not contacting people, contact me. I'm happy to have these conversations. Do I support LGBTQ? No. Do I support same-sex marriage? Absolutely not. Have I had to work through negotiations at times in my career where I made mistakes that did not sacrifice the foundations of the community, but important allyships had to be maintained? Absolutely. And we find a precedence for this in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the way to Mecca, he points at Mecca after his camel uh, stops and he says, those people, if they call me to Maru for Salat al-Raham or Sha'ir Allah, I'll work with them. These people ask me to work towards something which is noble, to work towards establishing family values, to work towards establishing the sacred. I will do so. And Imam Ibn Qayyim in Zad al-Ma'ad says, this means that a Muslim can ally with anyone as long as we don't sacrifice the tenets and non-negotiables of Islam with anybody. Then he gives a list of people. So in that vein, I tried to serve. And in that vein, I definitely made mistakes, but in no way, shape, or form did I intend or explicitly ever say that these things are permissible, because they're not. There's no need to say that. There was an article written, I think the elephant in the room, a gay Muslim wrote it from my website, talking about what it was like to be a gay Muslim. I, I, I have no problem with someone who openly struggles with something that they, they are, are dealing with in their life. There's a difference between welcoming and affirming. And so I, I have never in any shape or form explicitly said these things are allowed, would encourage people to think so. And, and again, my mistake and my failure to communicate effectively, although I've done it in the past with Baruj the tour some years ago, I answered these things, but always willing to have discussions with people. I was misrepresented, specifically misrepresented in two articles in America. One of them, I got them to take it back. And I said, like, I didn't say this. And you're describing as, as, as well as a description, I believe both are descriptions. I didn't say it. And we have to be careful of the media, man, that they will, they will set us up. And I learned a lesson from that, alhamdulillah. I'm an agent for the U.S. government. I, I'm, I'm a poor person, man. I don't have, uh, I'm not a, a, by any means someone who is financially uh, li living a great, a, a great life. Uh, I, I, I have never been supported, never taken money from any government, and in fact have pushed in many ways governments to be honest in in america you have separation of church and state you don't have separation of church and mosque and we are under tremendous pressure so i want to sort of emphasize that this moment is not so much about that individual that's sort of a waste of time his followers unfortunately i worry about them and i worry about their 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 centering as muslims but more so a message to the people of the ilm who i may have offended inadvertently or intentionally uh, to you to forgive me um, that I've made these mistakes and that I want to encourage you to contact me in love and brotherhood and sisterhood to have conversations. And that's why I, I mentioned, you know, I saw the post of Five Pillars Media numerous times, I think a few times, I'm not sure, but I've been betrayed by them in ways that are not true. And I've now reached out and said, hey, I'm on your podcast. Let's talk through Afia Sadiqi. Let me tell you what happened. That's not true. That's not what happened. Let's talk about was, was I somehow approached at that event. I, I instigated the salam to that brother. Uh, I, I met him actually twice and gave salam. So that takes me to the situation that, again, people of ill, people of water, people of knowledge, contact me. You have concerns? I'm happy to have conversations and benefit benefit from you. The second now is the issue that took place this weekend, and it happened in a way that I had not intended. Uh, I, I really feel, should I hear my daughter crying, 
that we almost have to make a move here, but um, was deeply disturbed by how it turned out and, and, and felt bad for the community there because I had been attacked by this person uh, more than once. And I, I thought it was odd that he never comes to even have a conversation with me to do due diligence. And I realized that there are a number of issues to his approach that reveal he's dishonest, he's a liar. And one of them, he doesn't take the time to contact people. He said, you know, I don't have to contact. Yes, you do. I mean, even someone who commits apostasy, used to tab, should be <laughs> should be approached. You know, these are not sins that are anywhere near apostasy, unless you may think that, uh, brother. But the the rule of thumb is that there's no jah without ta'deel, and that fatabayyanu, that we communicate. So I thought it was strange that you you weren't there, and I I I uh, emotionally, and I don't apologize for that. I. I called you out and said, come through. And I was very happy that you came. And that's why I responded and, and, and set up a time. I, I thought I made it clear that we were going to have a, a man-to-man conversation with cameras on, by the way. I didn't have a problem with that. Um, not a debate. Uh, I understand how moderated debates work. It's not something I like to do. I like that we talk as men and that we, we illustrate our positions as men one-to-one. And so I, I know that you came into the masjid. I know that the masjid asked us to leave, which I agreed to do. I wanted to respect the masjid. I gave you salams first, as you know, inside the masjid. Then on the way out, you accused me of orchestrating a setup because I knew the masjid would not allow this to happen. But I was like, it doesn't happen to happen at the masjid. And that's why the imam, assistant imam, invited you to come to his home, invited me to come. He told me he invited you. That's what I know. You can let us know if that's true or not. And invited me to come and meet you at his home, and I agreed. I was told that you didn't want to. Um, so I sat in the parking lot for, for some time. There are people who witnessed this, and I hope they'll share their thoughts on social media. And then I came back and gave you salam, and then this is where you told me I had to wear a microphone. You know, you don't have the right to tell anyone what to do, right? So you told me I have to wear a microphone. I said, I have malaika that can hear everything I'm saying. And, of course, we began to discuss. And it was interesting, I, I find, within your own repertoire, dear brother, that I believe that you are completely unaccomplished intellectually and Islamically. And you admitted that you're ignorant and you're not a sheikh. And al-Qurāru sayyidu adilla. So that doesn't mean to be addressed. You've said that. If people are saying that you said that in humility, then well, like the time I said, this is my rabbi. That was said out of humility, out of a sense of rhetoric. So it's interesting that there is this misapplication and a convenient usage of rhetorical interpretation when it fits people's needs. And I think that's one thing that's interesting about you. Very rarely um, are you willing to accept that you're wrong or that you will engage with people that believe you're wrong. But the first, I think, was the tweet by Blair Imani, and somehow you expected me to have Keshf and know that she would become a lesbian, which was impossible. I honestly did not know what that word meant. I had to Google it. And if someone had contacted me and said, man, this is what this means, I would have taken that tweet down, man if I had known that was the direction of where that was headed, and that's my fault. I own that mistake. And I said that to you. I said, man, that's my fault, man. Right there in front of everyone, I said it. Hey, that's a mistake I've made. But to amplify it, to say now that I'm supporting and the way it's portrayed intentionally an agenda is a lie. The interesting thing is that just last week, I think, uh, a Sheikh Lipan, who you've also attacked, a respected scholar and Sheikh, I think his name is uh, Sajid, Ali Pan, I believe is his name. Uh, you, you've you attacked him, I've seen now. I didn't know that you attacked so many people. Um, but he actually showed that you shared a tweet last week, which was fictitious and was, was actually photoshopped. And I think this is that contradiction that concerns me. The second was that somehow you tried, and I noticed as I was continuing to respond to you, you would kind of jump from one issue to another. You wouldn't stay focused. Um, you were obviously a little bit upset and angry, and I know because you believe your truth, and you turn to the audience. I think some of your family members may have been there and was told who were kind of your fans, which is great to see your family support you. Alhamdulillah, that's a great thing. Um, but to say that somehow I supported looking at filthy photos, when you yourself have pixelated photos of women that are in unfortunate, um, you know, like the dress code isn't Sharia compliant, and are you encouraging now? And with the same logic, can I say you're encouraging people to look at them? Of course not. Like, I, I wouldn't think that. 
But you even have a video of a woman who's married now, who at one time didn't wear hijab, who repented to Allah, someone who I know to be a person, who's a very good person, good family, alhamdulillah, someone I have respect for. Um, you have a married woman without hijab in her video. And people can go, I'm not going to share these things because I don't think it's fair to make people pawns in these moments. You can go and look through Daniel's things and see these things. And it's unfortunate that you did that, but that is a great contradiction. You yourself actually do this. And then finally, the reason I believe that you're unworthy of engagement and why, especially people of Dean who may be swayed by some of the things you say should pay attention to this, is that you continue to exhibit a lack of commitment to the demands of Islamic debate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly in the 43rd chapter of the Quran commands that we should not use names that are foul or nicknames. And you called Sheikh Pan and myself a racial epithet. Um, which is unacceptable on any level, right? It's it's something that the Prophet called a sifat of jahiliyyah. And I hope, you know, people can find it. I think it's on your telegram um, where, where I was shown by someone there that this should render you incapable of any type of critique of anyone. That that, 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 that type of ethical approach, laughing at young girls in Afghanistan who can't go to school, calling Muslims racial epithets, using these kind of terms in the simple rules of Adab al-Bath al you would be expelled from the octagons of the discussions of the people of knowledge. So as I close, I think this is an important moment in history. I want to warn people from following you. I find you extremely problematic for reasons that have shown from uh, our tradition lack of ethics, the inability to do research, a constant need to lie, stepping into a situation with bad assumptions, like when you saw me in the mosque and you said to me, you set this up, like, this is you projecting, man, using a highly insensitive language, being, as you admitted, a jahad. So that's done, right? Let's put you into the recycle bin of, of sort of this moment that comes and goes in history. More importantly, for our brothers and sisters in the center who I've hurt, um, on the right and left, um, coming to you and admitting my mistakes to you uh, on certain issues that have been presented to me. I ask that you forgive me. I could have done things a lot better. Trying to navigate the left in America, making mistakes, absolutely. Um, the issue on, 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 on the article, a mistake that I admit, I own it, um, and not being more transparent. And I think there's a double issue here that when someone feels they're being attacked, they're not transparent. And so it sort of feeds itself. So I want to invite you, as I said, five pillars. I'm happy to come on and have conversations with you. I'm trying to establish a new Paul from Blocking Theology. We shot to me a few months ago. Someone I, I have a lot of respect for. I think his podcast is absolutely amazing. And I hope to come on, not to talk about this issue in particular that happened this weekend, but to talk about the broader issues of the pressure of being Muslim in America, that there's not separation of church and mosque in this country, that we're experiencing things that you not be, may be aware of. I've been banned from countries, not Muslim countries, countries which are not Muslim. And and the pressure that that puts on leadership and the mistakes that will happen and then what are the structures we can do to have communication with one another and to correct one another. Ask Allah SWT for those of you who have been with me for these years and agree with me that I hope this is a moment of strengthening your resolve. I am committed to my work. I am committed to pushing forward. I am committed to learning. I'm committed to growth, but I'm not going to sit back and continue to see people irresponsibly attack uh, and dismantle institutions and imams and communities, people like Sheikh Yash al-Qadi, people like Dr. Omar Suleiman, people who I know and love and have respect for, Dadi al Mugahid, who I know agree with everything people do, but I know as the Prophet said, if the water is more than 2.5 liters, it doesn't hold evil. If people's good is more than 2.5 liters, it doesn't hold evil. And we need to appreciate that dynamic. I'm here to stay committed to the work and teaching that I do. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.